makers of Campbell's Soups present the Campbell Playhouse, Orson Welles, producer. Good evening, this is Orson Welles. Tonight we're going to present a typical chapter in the life of a special type of theatrical manager, the man who wears the mantle of the impresario. He's sometimes a genius, always a visionary, and is usually dressed in a haze of glory, especially if he's just created a success. But it's his particular ability to wear his aura whether he deserves it or not. He exists on the momentum of the past and the anticipation of the future. He's divorced from reality and lives in his own frantic world of the glorious, impractical dreams which keep bursting on the bubbling surplus of his mind. And lest I seem to convince you that he is a type entirely removed from the usual producer, let me hasten to assure you that we are all a little guilty of the same dreams and the same aspirations. The play is 20th century, our version of 20th century, which was written by those inimitables Ben Hecht and Charlie MacArthur from the play by Charles Bruce Milholland. And tonight our leading lady is Elisa Landy, who has appeared notably on Broadway and in a large number of successful films in the past few seasons. Mr. Sam Levine plays Owen O'Malley, and you've met him before on this program. And we also have here in the studio the model for Owen O'Malley, one of the characters in the play... Not the producer, but one of the most remarkable characters on Broadway. Richard Maney, press agent without peer, an interpreter to the world for a number of the great dreamers of the theater. He will speak in his own defense at the end of the program. And now, before we begin our story, a word from Ernest Chappell. Tonight I want to talk to you about Campbell's vegetable soup. And if there's any one soup by which to judge the fine, home-like way that all Campbell soups are made, this is it. Because vegetable soup has always been a family standby, and the soup most often made at home. If you still make your own vegetable soup now and again, won't you please do this? Serve Campbell's vegetable soup next time, so that you and your family can compare it with your own. See if its appetizing look, its good flavor, and its satisfying substance don't fully measure up to the best you ever ladled from your own home soup kettle. I want you to do this because Campbell's chefs make vegetable soup the good home way, just as you would do. They simmer selected beef until they have a rich, invigorating stock. But what perhaps you wouldn't do is use 15, yes, 15 different garden vegetables. Campbell's do. And you can tell by looking at it how substantial and hearty and nourishing a 15 vegetable soup can be. Every delicious spoonful proves it over and over again. So I urge you to set a plate of Campbell's vegetable soup before hungry children or grown-ups for lunch or supper tomorrow. That's the real test of how good it is. And now, 20th Century, starring Orson Welles with Alyssa Landy and Sam Levine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this here is a love story. This here is the inside story of that great romance you all know about, of course, which transpired between that gorgeous feminine star, Lily Garland, of stage and screen, and the great Oscar Jaffe, who is a famous producer and is crazy. Now, I hate to tell you about it because it cost me plenty, but here it is. One of the great romances of the ages and against ro uh, romance, nobody, not the smartest man in the business, not even me, Max Jacobs, can do a thing. Max Jacobs, that's my name. I'm a Broadway producer, and I do very nice. Four hits the last two years. Smash hits, not cheap turkeys either. Good, clean, lively entertainment. I got companies playing all over the country. The money's pouring in. I got no complaint about that. But do people call me the genius of the American theater? No. Do I get my picture on the cover of the Time magazine? No. Am I invited to speak before the culture committee of the city club? No. Now take this last thing. What happened to me with Lily Garland shouldn't happen to a dog. Only yesterday, up to 8, 10 p.m., I was sitting pretty. A great script in one pocket and a contract in the other. And Lily Garland waiting for me on a train at Toledo. Lily Garland, the name anywhere today is worth a fortune. That's show business for you. 
Now, I remember when Lily Garland wasn't even anybody's name. I can remember the first time she walked into Oscar Jaffe's office. That was nine years ago, and I was his office boy. Here you are, miss. Third floor. Where's Mr. Jaffe's office? Uh, right down the hall, miss. Uh, turn to the right. Uh, there's a lot of people waiting for him, miss. I don't think you'll get to see him. Well, I'll try. Thanks. Okay. I've been okay. here three hours now. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rhoda said I could see Mr. Wait a minute. Jaffe. Wait a minute. Both Chamberlain time. and Lyman Brown said Mr. Jaffe would see me first. I, 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 and I've got a letter all the way to Syracuse to see Mr. Jaffe. I, I, I have this letter. One at a time, please. One at a time. Don't you see I can't talk to more than one at a time? I know. Hey, sister, but... come back from that door. Where do you think you're going? That's Mr. Jaffe's private office. I'm looking for a job. So is a lot of other people. You've got an appointment? No. Well, you can't come in here without an appointment. Not a chance. Well, how do you get one? You write a letter. Well, what do you say in it? Hey, ain't you never been in a theater office before? Come over here. I'll take your name for the file. Oh, I've been waiting here for three years. I came all the way from Syracuse. All right, all right, all right. When he's ready to see you, he'll see you. All right, now, one I have to get to where All right, let me have your name. Hey, you, you, Sugar, what's your name? Mildred Plotkin. Mildred Plotkin. Address? 2083A Prospect Avenue, the Bronx. Experience? I want to be an actress. Uh, I said experience. Oh, look, Mr. Jacobs, I'm not going to stand for this any longer. If Mr. Jacobs... I came all the way from Syracuse to see Mr. Jaffe. I'm sure if Mr. Jaffe knew I was here. All right, all right, all right. All right. Hold your hats, will you? I'll go in and see what I can do. Uh, Mr. West, Mr. Yes, West. yes, Jacob, what is it? Quiet, quiet, quiet. I'm on the phone. Yes, Mr. O'Malley. Why, you inaccurate Muscovite? Yes, yes, I'm Mr. Jaffe's press representative. It's very malo at the times. He's driving me crazy. Listen, you unfortunate Armenian. Oscar Jaffe's next production will surpass anything ever seen in this country or any other country, in this generation or any other generation. Right! I'll hold him for a while. Hey, Mr. O'Malley, where's the chief? How should I know? I'm only the press agent around here. He's in the 13th century room, meditating. Meditating? I've got 85 actors standing outside, and every one of them with a card to be here at 11 o'clock to see Mr. Jaffe personal. Well, you better clear the arena, Webb. When the chief starts meditating, it's liable to go on for days. Oh, well, here goes. Come on, Jacobs. Mr. Jaffe said he'd see you. All right, all right, all right. Here, phone call this is Mr. 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 Oliver Jaffe. Webb. Oh, hello, Oliver. Mr. Webb is Oscar Jaffe's business manager. Oh, uh, well, Mr. Webb, I, I, now, I've quiet, been Quiet, please, for... quiet, I... ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry, but Mr. Jaffe will be unable to see anybody today. Oh. I have been trying to see Mr. Jaffe for two weeks. Mr. Well. Jaffe told me to come Mr. back Jaffe today. Mr. Jaffe, Eleven o'clock. Absolutely positively I know, promised I know, me. Mr. Jaffe changed his mind. Come back tomorrow. Oh, oh yes, no. Well, please. Oh, no. Mr. Jaffe. Webb. Webb. Will you never learn? How long will this organization continue behind my back to trample upon the sensibilities of actors, of artists? It's very discouraging. But, Chief, I... How I, many I, times have I told you that I always see everyone? But, Chief, you said only yesterday Webb, that you... you have insulted these people. I will speak to them myself. I will apologize for you. Ladies and gentlemen, for 18 years... Mr. Jaffe, I played Rosencrantz with Mr. Mantell. Uh, and please. he said... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for 18 years I have devoted myself to the theater. Brain, soul, heart, spirit. I have given them all unstintingly in the service of that beautiful, devouring mistress of us all. The theater. With the toil of my hands, the anguish of my spirit, I have built this beautiful theater in which you stand today. Who have I built it for? The public? Philistines? Bootleggers? No. The playwrights? Hacks? Plagiarists? No. This beautiful theater that I have built with the toil of my hands and the anguish of my spirit, I have built it for you. And you alone, you, the sinews and the soul of the theater. You, the true artists. For you, the actors. Hey, Chief, these people are waiting to see you about casting. Uh, casting? Oh, no, no, not today, not today. Come again, my friends. Come again whenever you wish. Remember, the doors of this beautiful theater are always open to you. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. And remember, no matter what, I love you all. All right, folks. All right. That's all for today. That's all. <laughs> Mr. 
Jacobs. Yes, Mr. O'Malley. The boss says there's a girl with bangs, uh, the fourth one on the right. Green dress and eyes like amethyst. Send her up. He wants to see her right away. All right, Mr. O'Malley, I get it. Hey, you, sugar. Here she is, sire. Come in, my dear. Come in. Don't be nervous, my dear. What's your name? Mildred Plotkin. Plotkin. Good heavens. Well, now stand up and let me look at you, my dear. Yeah. Now walk across the room. Now just uh, walk. <laughs> slowly, slowly. Head up. Hmm. Well, we'll have to begin at the very beginning, O'Malley. At the very beginning. Now, my dear, let me hear you speak. The timbre of your voice. What shall I say? Say, say I love you. I love you. O'Malley, when, uh, when did you say her name was? Mildred Plotkin. From now on, O'Malley, she is Lily Garland. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, dear. Can I try it again? I love you. Uh, my dear, have you ever been in love? No, sir. That is, not really. There, there's a boy who lives on the concourse. We please, have... please, please. Try again. I love you. I love you. Yes, again, with feeling, please. I love you. Yeah, so the spark is there. The spark is there. So you want to be an actress? Yes, sir. Do you know what it means to be an actress? Well, sir, I... Drudgery, my dear. Disappointment, my dear. Failure, which take their toil of your youth, your strength, your beauty. For you are beautiful, Lily Garland. Oh, oh thank and you. And you'll have to learn to live. To live. You'll have to learn to experience love. The deep, shattering passions that will unloose the hidden wellsprings of your being. Uh, O'Malley. Yes, sire? O'Malley. Oh, yes, sire. O'Malley. Okay, sire. Now then, my dear, you can be quite at your ease. Let's try it again. I love you. I love you. Yeah, once more, my dear. Pear-shaped orange. I love you. 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 So that's how this here romance came about. It's almost nine years now since the names of Oscar Jaffe and Lily Garland was first linked in the columns. The most terrific romance of the modern theater history. And business? Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar Jaffe and Lily Garland was big money in this town. Seven in a row. Smash hits. Remember the titles? The Heart of North Carolina, Undaunted. The Heart of South Carolina, Besmirched. The Sin of Ivory Dupree. And finally, The Postcard. It looked like they couldn't miss, those two. You know, it was too bad in a way that them two split up. Nobody on Broadway could figure what really happened there. Maybe that's always the way with great love. Two years ago, that was. Garland picks up and goes to Hollywood, and now she's the hottest thing in pictures. And what happens to Jaffe? Well, he splits with Garland. That was for him the beginning of the toboggan. Flop, flop, flop. Yes, sir, things is looking pretty bad for Jaffe. He closes his show in Chicago after five nights. Joanne of Arc. It cost him 75 grand. Imagine it. A lot of men in tin suits and a revolving stage. I don't know how he gets out of town, but he does. He gets out yesterday at 2.40 on the 20th century. And that's when this here great love story starts in again. On the 20th century. <laughs> Hey, hey, Webb, where's the chief? He's going to miss the train. Oh, search me. He ought to be here by now. You don't suppose the sheriff nabbed him, do you? Ah, there's no sheriff in Chicago fast enough to catch up with the chief when he's dodging him. Oh, I tell you, I had a hard time getting out of that theater myself this morning. Four writs and two attachments. Oh, this is our worst flop yet. There was no excuse for this one, either. Yeah. Joan of Arc. Sixteen angels and 92 extras in full suits of armor with crossbows. There were more people on the stage than in the audience. You'd think he'd learn, wouldn't you? Not Oscar Jaffe. Once he gets an idea to, into oh! his head... Hey, 
hey there, you Tasmanian ticket taker. Hold it. What? Mr. Jaffe isn't on board yet. I can't help that. This train starts on time, Mr. Jaffe, or no, Mr. Jaffe. You start this train over my dead body. Hey, you emaciated Algonquin. You better hurry. She's moving away. Hi, O'Malley, jump her. Hey, hey, where's the emergency door? What are you doing? Do you know it's a prison offense to pull that thing? All right, tell it to the judge. Oh, you... Now you've done it. Wait till the train detective gets here. He'll have you in hand. Wait till Oscar Jaffe catches up with you. He'll fry you in large. Jaffe or no Jaffe? O'Malley. Whip. Has everyone deserted oh, me? Sorry, Chief. I didn't know you were on board. Of course I'm on board. I got on the observation car and walked through. It's okay, Conductor. Ah. Sorry for the little accident. Now, you go ahead now and start your kitty car. Did you get drawing room A? Here it is, Chief. Well... Well, we, we almost busted a lung getting it for you, Chief. Ah, very good, very good. Did you order the flowers? What flowers? I distinctly gave instructions to have drawing room B banked with gardenias. Gardenias, the flowers of love. I sent word to the box office. Oh, well, would you want me hanging around a box office while it's with 16 process servers lying in there waiting for me and You'll Amish have us? to stop drinking, O'Malley. You're no good to me this way. It's very discouraging. All right, sire. Now, do you mind telling me just Telegraph what... Maurice, the florist and Toledo, to send all the gardenias he has to drawing room B, this car. Okay, Chief. What's her name? I want those gardenias to contain a message. Let me see. Think now, let me think. To the little lady of the snows. No, I didn't use that this time. Hmm. I've got it. From the grave of someone you loved yesterday. How's that? That's fine. A little on the sad side, ain't it? It's perfect. Why can't I get playwrights to write like that? Web, take my coat, will you? Yes, Chief. Thanks, thanks. Now, don't let me brood, boys, will you? O'Malley, go order lunch. See if they put me by myself at the big table. Now, how am I gonna do that? The diner is packed. Tell them it's for me. Now, go on. Give the man five dollars. Go on. If you want want privacy, why don't you travel in a balloon? And besides, we haven't got five dollars. Chief, if you've got a minute, I'd like to talk to you. Yes, what is it? Speak up! Chief, do you know what our bank balance is after Joan of Arc? Don't bother me with trivialities. Do you know what I was thinking on my way to the train, Webb? Nothing morbid, I hope. I was thinking, Webb, that of all my 68 productions, the most beautiful was Joan of Arc. I saw the play five times and cried like a baby every time. That revolving stage was pure genius. Well, revolving stage and all, we did exactly $942 on those five performances. 75000 bucks in the hole. That makes three flops right in a row. Yes, but what a magnificent failure. If I am a genius, Webb, it is because of my failures. Always remember that. Okay, and now will you tell me what you're going to do about that note for $250,000 the banks are holding? Webb, don't annoy me about money matters now. Do you mind, Webb? This time they're going to take your theater away from you. My theater? Webb, they wouldn't dare. You got the writ last Thursday. Unless you've got the money tomorrow, they're going to spring it. Who's back of that? I know I can guess. Max Jacobs, that cheap crooked little chiseler that I picked out of the gutter, a man I kicked out of my theater for stealing, a man on whom I closed the iron door. No, Chief, it's not Max Jacobs, it's the banks, all three banks. They got together last week. Oh, they did, huh? Conspiracy. Well, I want to tell you something, Webb. It takes more than a handful of banks to keep me down. Webb, I'll tell you a secret. A friend of ours is coming on board this train. Who? Lily Garland. L- Lily Garland? Chief, do you mean I that you and she... I never closed the iron door on her web. You know that. This morning, I found out she was returning from Hollywood, and by a miraculous coincidence, we're occupying adjoining drawing rooms. You mean the gardenias, the flowers of love? Yes, Webb. Well, that's something like it, Chief. With Lily Garland's name on a contract, we can walk into the bank tomorrow and write our own ticket. Precisely. Well, you certainly had me worried, Chief. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thought we were all through for good this time. That's when I'm at my best, Webb, with my back against the wall. Disaster staring me in the face. Henry VIII, the bride of Baghdad, and now... Joan of Arc, no money, no credit, my theater, everything I have gone, everything but the name of Jaffe. Uh, Listen, Chief, let me get this straight. Have you got Lily under contract? Oh, don't be sordid, Webb. Between me and Lily, bond more lasting than paper, thicker than ink. Uh, Look, Chief, she's going to be pretty snooty after the hit she's just made. What hit? In the movies. Lily Garland will never be any good in the movie. What are you talking about? She won the gold statue last year. What gold statue? A big gold statue they give away every year for the best performance. Who does that? Uh, some academy. That's impossible. She can't be any good in the movies. Her face is all wrong. It took me four years to make her look like a human well, being. Chief, so long as Lily Garland is indefinite, I've got something constructive to suggest. I got a telegram this morning from Max Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> 
communicating with Max Jacobs. Treachery. Huh? You listen, I'll tell you what he said. I forbid you ever to mention the name of Max Jacobs to me again. That's final. Besides, his real name is Mandelbaum. Max Mandelbaum, a Galician. I dismissed him for stealing. Chief, we've got to face the facts. You fired him because he said Henry VIII was going to be a flop, and it was. What does he know about the theater, that buttonhole maker? Well, he knows enough to produce three smash hits in a row while you've been laying one bad egg after another. That's fact. Webb, I've had enough of your treachery. Get out. It's in your interest to listen to this wire. You've shown your true colors, Webb. You're fired. I've had just about enough. Get out, I said. Get out. Go to Mandelbaum, or whatever his name Oscar, is. Oscar, let me tell you. Judas Iscariot. Get out. Come in. Yeah, I'm going, I'm What's going, Chief. Oliver, where are you going? Mr. Jaffe has fired me for the last time. Get out, Oliver Webb. I close the iron door. All right, go ahead. Close it. Abandoned. Ah, Chief. Deserted. Which frame? What? No loyalty. No, no gratitude. Now, look, look, Chief. Yes, what is it? Is it true Lily Garland's on this train? She is, getting on at Englewood. Englewood? Englewood? It's not Englewood. This is Englewood. Englewood! Ah, so it is. Pull down the shade, O'Malley. She'll probably be on the platform. I don't want her to see me through the window. Shock might unnerve her. Okay, Chief. All right. Now raise the shade. That's it. Just a crack, more. That's too many. Now look out. Don't let Lily see you. Okay, Chief. Yeah. You see her, O'Malley? Not yet. Now do you see her, O'Malley? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, yeah, here she comes, bag and bag. Tell me, O'Malley, is she as beautiful as ever? Oh, I must see her, O'Malley, I must see her. Oh! Oh, good heavens! She's blind! Blind! Those amethyst eyes, dulled forever. Horrible, horrible. Ah, hold your horses, Chief. She's wearing sunglasses. All those Hollywood girls wear them. Sunglasses, eh? Vulgar buffoonery. Ah, Chief, now she's on board. Open the door. Just a crack, just a crack. Let me hear the voice. Right this way, Miss Drawn room. It must be her. Hey, Porter, what's the idea of kicking those bags around? There's some perfume in there that cost $18 an ounce. Her voice, O'Malley. That's Lily, all right. That voice, Lily, is coming back to us, O'Malley. On the level, Chief. In her heart of hearts, she knew she belonged to me and to the theater. I shall hold open the door of reconciliation by offering her a great legitimate role. You got to play for her, Chief? I repeat, I shall offer her a great uh, role. The greatest character ever put on the stage. Half devil, half woman who makes a great sacrifice for love. Yeah, sure, I know, Chief, but have you got to play, you know, something tangible, something she can see herself walking around the stage in? In my trunk, O'Malley, there are a hundred plays, each one a masterpiece. Oh, that collection of moth-eaten scripts. Now, for the love of Pete, Chief, you ought to to know you can't pull plays out of a hat, not real plays. I don't want to argue with you, O'Malley. Find Webb and tell him to draw up a contract in legal form. Webb? Webb says you fired him. I fired him. Oh, so he's going to take advantage of that, is he? You tell Webb I've forgiven him. Tell Webb if... Wait a minute. Who's there? I'll see. Excuse me, Flynn. Maestro. Chief, it's the first and second base of the house of David baseball team. Maestro, maestro, we must talk with you. Is this a matter of big and Listen, problem, boys, yeah. feed it. Mr. Jaffe's very busy. O'Malley, please. Don't you know I always see people? Maestro. Maestro. Maestro, this is a great, great privilege. Bitte lass mich auf die Spreche, Peter. Nein, nein, er versteht mich. Well, if you're gonna talk, spit it out. Well, my friend don't speak English so good. Maestro, I wish to say... Just a minute, August. Maybe the maestro has seen us sometimes. Of course, of course. I seldom forget a face. Actors looking for work. Throw him out, Nein, Chief. nein. We are actors from the miracle play from Oberammergau. Oh, of course. Of course I should have recognized you. Stand up, O'Malley. These gentlemen represent the purest branch of the theater. Hello, boys. O'Malley, take off your hat. These are the only pure actors we have left. How do you like the United States, man? We don't like it so good. We got lots of trouble. Maestro, we got nothing to eat. Oh, so you want to borrow some money, is oh, it? Danke, 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 danke. danke. We yeah. say to ourselves, the great maestro. So rich. So generous. Yeah, he will take pity on us poor players. Yeah. Pity, yeah. Gentlemen, you are engaged. O'Malley, tell Webb to drop contracts right away. 
Two hundred a week. Two uh, hundred? The hundred and fifty. A run of the play. Give them an advance. Advance? Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, America, that is the land of miracles. Listen, Chief, for the love of my... No argument. No argument, O'Malley. Okay, sire. All right, boys. Beat it. Beat it. See you later. Maestro, we can never thank you enough. Never, Maestro. All right, never, goodbye. Never, goodbye, never. fellas. Goodbye. Now listen, Chief. Are you clean off your nut? Do you know what it'll cost to transport that bunch of itinerant whiskers across the country? It's an inspiration, O'Malley. You don't understand these things. Just when my back was against the wall. I am going to produce the miracle play. The what? The miracle play. Now listen, Chief. Now listen. I've stood for a lot of phony ideas, but I'm not going to let you get mixed up in any of that high art like that. You forget yourself, O'Malley. The miracle is the most exalted drama in human history. It will be colossal, sublime, my ultimate achievement. Well, anyway, it'll help us forget Lily Garland. On the contrary, O'Malley, I'm doing it for her. For Lily Garland, the miracle play. The role of the Salome. It's perfect casting. The part fits her like a glove. It'll crown her career in the theater. Wait till I tell her. Wait, wait until she hears about it. Please. It's Webb, Chief. It's Webb. Webb, you may come in. Mr. Webb, I have decided for the sake of your wife and child to take you back. The innocent shall not suffer with the guilty. Huh? Oh, thanks, Chief. Listen, I've just been talking to Lily. Lily Garland? You've been talking to Lily? That's right. And between you and me, Chief, it's not going to be so easy. What do you mean? The moment I mentioned your name... You told her I was on the train? slipped out before I could think. Yeah, well, go on. The moment I mentioned your name, she began screaming at me like a fishwife. Screamed like a fishwife, yeah. eh? Good. That shows the battery isn't dead. She said she'd never want to see you again. She said she wished she never had seen you. She said that, did uh -huh. she? I, who taught her everything she knows. I made a great actress out of her with all Broadway at her feet. She worshipped me, Lily and I. Wait, Webb, Lily and I, ours was the great romance of the theater. Beside it, Dusa and Annuncio were pale fires. What did you say to her, Webb? Well, I sort of passed the time of day, you know, sort of casual. You didn't give her any false ideas about it being necessary to me. Not a word. All right, gentlemen, the time has come. I'm going in to talk with her now. Let me tell you, Webb, the destinies of Lily Garland and Oscar Jaffe are bound together by hoops of steel. Open the door, O'Malley, into a drawing room, into my past. I'm going to reclaim a soul from Hollywood. Lily Garland. Oscar Jaffe. Lily. Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Lily. Poor Lily. And what do you mean by that, Oscar? You know what I mean, Lily. I saw it. Saw what? What on earth are you talking about? That movie, that last movie. When I saw that last movie of yours, I blamed myself. Only myself, Lily. Oh. Oh, you saw it. Everybody said I was marvelous. I'm sorry, Lily. There were moments when you were marvelous, the real you coming through, but that cheap story, Lily, that unimaginative director. Oh, you're, ah. you're right there, Oscar. The director was an idiot. Did I have to fight to get my own ideas across? You were like a magnificent ruby set in a pail of lard. You put yourself back ten years, Lily. Ten <laughs> years. You just have to fight them all the time, Oscar. I can understand, Lily. You're a great artist, great woman. I never appreciated you until I lost you. Darn right you didn't. You haven't had a hit since. All your grand illusions that you were Shakespeare, Napoleon, and the Grand Lama of Tibet all rolled into one. You're absolutely right, Lily. What? I realize now that in the largest sense, it was not Oscar Jaffe who made Lily Garland. It was Lily Garland who made Oscar Jaffe. Oh, I'm glad you've come to acknowledge that. I've paid for my mistake a thousand times. Listen, Oscar, if all this is a preliminary to a contract, you can save your breath. Contract? Oh, contract? Who said anything about a contract? Lily? Don't kid me. You'd do anything to get my name on a contract. Oh, no, Lily, no. I came here with a dream we both had long ago. The thing we'd planned as a climax to your career. The last step in the golden stair. For the love of Mike, will you stop being mysterious? Now, what is it you're trying to pull out of a bag? Lily. Another part where I'm not worthy of the lieutenant's love and make a great sacrifice? No, Lily, no. What is it? Montezuma again? Or that big drama about Hairpin Annie, the pride of the gas house? No, Lily, none of these things. This just happens to be the greatest woman of all times. Just her memory, Lily, has kept the world in tears for centuries. Salome. Salome, Lily. Listen to me, Lily Garland. 
I'm going to put the miracle play on in New York with Lily Garland as Salome. I've had it my sleeve all this time, waiting for the right moment. You play the wickedest woman of her age. Sensual, heartless, beautiful, corrupting everything she touches, running the gamut from gutter to glory. Can't you see her, Lily? I'm going to have Alexander the Great strangle himself with her hair. I can see the whole thing. Salome. A Salome. A, a Salome. In the beginning as a young girl, innocent, childlike. And then after having been heartbroken by some man she loved madly and trusted, she went down, 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 down. into the depths. Hating and despising all men. That's right. Laughing at times. Laughing at them so cruel, so terrible. It'll be the greatest production I've ever made, Lily. I brought over an entire troupe from Europe. Took them away from Max Reinhardt. Cost me my shirt, but I wanted them. Two of them are geniuses. It'll run five years, and you can have every dollar it makes. All I want is to stagger New York. A desert scene with a hundred camels and real sand. Brought over from Arabia, I'm going to have a Babylonian banquet in the second act. You're dancing with all your slaves around you. You're covered with emeralds in that scene from head to foot. But that's nothing to the finish. Where you stand in rags, and the Emperor Nero himself offers you half his empire. And you answer him with a speech that's probably the greatest piece of literature ever written with all the lights pouring down on you, transfigured by love and sacrifice. Nero cringes, and the last we see of you is a little figure selling olives in the marketplace. Ha, ha, ha! What is it? <laughs> You're crazy. What do you mean? You're a pure case of leaping paranoia. Now, don't be cheap, Lily. <laughs> Coming in here with camels and sand from Arabia. You're a scream. You're going to put on the miracle play? You haven't a hundred dollars to your name. I can raise a million. Two million. Yes, and I know how you intend to raise it. Get my name on a contract and go out peddling it. Shake down some new angel on the strength of my reputation. No, thank you. I'm through being your meal ticket, Oscar Jaffe. You're at liberty to call up any one of my banks in the morning. Your banks? Do you mean the ones that are taking your theater away from you? That's a lie. You've been listening to my enemies. I've been listening to Mr. Webb, your so-called business manager. He broke in here with some sob story about your going to commit suicide unless I took pity on you. Well, go on out and commit it. It'd be a blessing to everybody concerned, you scorpion. Mr. Webb is no longer with me. I fired him for stealing. Oh, shut up. I've had enough of your life. Lily Garland, I've offered you a last chance to become immortal. Thank you, but I've decided to stay immortal with a responsible management. Who? Max Jacobs. Oh! Can't believe it. No? Well, read the papers tomorrow, then. He's meeting the train at Toledo, and I'm going to sign with him. Max Jacobs! Max Jacobs! He's a thief! Illiterate! He can hardly write his name! Well, he writes it all right on checks. Great big checks, too. Oh, no, it's the money! The money! That's all you want. Money, money, money. If I jingled a miserable ten or fifteen thousand at you, your mouth would begin to water. You'd start drooling and squealing. Gimme, 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 gimme. That's right, Oscar. Now get out before I have the porter throw you off the train, you fake. You swindler! Stop that, you cheap little shop girl! Get out before I call the conductor! Go on, ring that bell! I'll tell the world who's a fake you are. I made you. I taught you everything you know. Your voice, your walk, your cheap little talent. They're mine. I gave them to you. I gave up everything to breathe them into you, even your name. Lily Garland, I gave you that. Well, as there's a justice in heaven, Mildred Plotkin, you'll end up where you belong. In the burlesque houses. <laughs> You are listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of 20th Century by Messrs. Hecht, MacArthur, and Milholland, and starring Orson Welles with Alyssa Landy and Sam Levine. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Ernest Chappell, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In a moment or two, we will resume our story, 20th Century, starring Orson Welles with Alyssa Landy and Sam Levine. The train on which our story takes place is one of the modern streamliners that typify the great progress made in railroad travel. You can see this same progress reflected all around you in radio, in home building, and in many other activities. Take, for example, the modern efficiency and ease of meal planning. Today you can serve the finest of soups quickly, conveniently, and economically for any meal. 
Good, hearty, homey vegetable soup is yours in a few minutes. Full-flavored chicken soup can be had for lunch or dinner any day. Many a soup that used to be considered expensive or difficult to make is served now as simply as saying ABC. These soups come in red and white labeled cans marked Campbell's. Their convenience in serving is as modern as streamlining. But I do want to impress upon you one thing. Underneath the label, Campbell's soups are the good old-fashioned kind. There's nothing newfangled about their carefully hand-picked ingredients, their tried-and-true recipes, or their old home soup kettle flavor. Home cooks have discovered that there's genuine home-cooked pleasure in every plateful, every spoonful of Campbell's soups. It's this old-fashioned good eating that has made Campbell's soups so popular, so heartily approved in many thousands of homes. Now we resume our story, 20th Century, starring Orson Welles with Elisa Landy and Sam Levine. O'Malley. I'm here, Chief. Well, how'd you make out with Lily Garland? O'Malley, where's that scoundrel Webb? Oh, he's around, Chief. I saw him a few moments ago in the club car talking to a little bozo with gray hair. More treachery. What do you mean, Chief? A dirty double crosser. You know what he did to me? He betrayed me. He told Lily Garland I was broke and helpless. Now, wait a minute, Chief. Maybe you've got him wrong. Wrong? I'm never wrong. I'm going to kill him with my bare hands. I'll strangle him, so help me. Even if I have to go to the chair for it, to the chair. Who is it? Me, Chief. Come in, Webb, you gray rat, and shut the door. Listen, Chief, I... Scoundrel! Look, Chief... What do you mean by telling Lily Garland Look, Chief, I've been talking with a man. Don't try to change the subject, you... He's going to finance the miracle play. That... Who? Who? A a man I met in the club car. I talked him into putting up the money for the whole thing. You did what? Webb, is this another of your coarse attempts to be funny? Funny? Take a look at this check. Is that funny? Check. $200,000, that's all. Webb... Who is this man? What do you know about him? He's Matthew C. Clark of the Patent Medicine Million. Holy man! And he's crazy about the miracle play. You see, O'Malley, what did I tell you? There is a justice in heaven. Webb, I apologize. You've done well. You've done nobly. I always said you were a man of imagination and iron will. Thanks, Chief. And now, gentlemen, action, action. Webb, get a hold of this man, Clark. Bring him here. I want to see right him. Right away, Chief. And then take that contract you drew up and go in and see Lily. Show her the check. You know, play her along. I get you, Chief. Leave it to me. Mr. Max Jacobs gets on the train at Toledo. He's going to get a little surprise, O'Malley. Now, take a telegram. Uh, John Ringling of the Ringling Brothers Circus. Dear John, I am in the market for 25 camels, 20 sheep, a few elephants, and an ibis. A what? Uh, an ibis. That's the royal bird of Egypt, O'Malley. You wouldn't know. Why, I mean, rock bottom price, Oscar Jaffe. What about lions? We'll have to cable London Zoo for them. They have the best specimens. We'll need 10 or 12 at least. Well, where are we going to house all these monsters? I'll construct a little zoo off the green room. I'm going to rebuild the whole theater to make it look like a grotto. A grotto? A grotto. A grotto. Do you by any chance remember the name of the Sultan of Turkey? Well, not offhand. Why, are you going to use him in the show, too? No, but I'll need about a dozen of his dervishes, the whirling ones. Never mind. We'll take it up with the Turkish and Arabian Council. How many sheep did I order? 20. Change that to read 50. We don't want to stint. Come in. Chief, this is Mr. Clark. Oh, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, I want you to meet Mr. Jaffe. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Clark? How do you do, Mr. Jaffe? Mr. Clark, Mr. O'Malley, my press agent. How's tricks? Oh, why, they are... I'm delighted, delighted, Mr. Clark, with what Mr. Webb has told me. <laughs> It'll be a great privilege to be associated with you, I assure you, sir. It'll be a great privilege for me, Mr. Jaffe, a great privilege. You'll just sit over here by the window, Mr. Clark. Yes, that's right. Nice and comfy. Webb, what about Lily? What'd she say? I spoke to her, Chief. She said she'd be in right away. Splendid, splendid. Now then, Mr. Clark, it seems to me that since we are to be associated, we should become better acquainted, don't you think, sir? Oh, indeed, yes, Mr. Jaffe. I am really quite thrilled by the whole thing. Your venture is one of the very worthiest efforts that this country has ever seen. I agree with you, Mr. Clark. I agree with you. I agree. There's, there's nothing like the living theater, Mr. Clark, for delivering a great message. Oh, indeed. That is true, sir. Night after night, Mr. Clark, when those enormous audiences are sitting in the hushed theater, spellbound before the genius of Lily Garland. Uh, Lily, Lily, the Lily greatest Garland. actress in the world, Lily Garland. I'm considering her in one of the parts. What oh, the professional actress? Oh, of course, of course. Oh, I don't think that will do, Mr. Jaffe. <laughs> I, I shouldn't like to have this play contaminated by any woman of the stage. Well, as I see your point, Mr. Clark, the spiritual flavor must come over in a bath of glory. And it shall, Mr. Clark. You can count on that, Mr. Clark. It shall. It so happens, of course, that the... The character of Salome. Oh, uh, oh, are we going to have a Salome in the play? Certainly, certainly. Salome. Oh, well, 
she, she's not one of my favorite characters. Yes, ah. <laughs> I've, I've always preferred... Uh, that's right. Miss Garland. Right, Miss Garland. Lily, uh, Miss Garland. come in. <laughs> Just in time. We were discussing the character of Salome, Mr. Clark here. Now, wait a minute, saying, Oscar. Uh, I haven't made up my mind. Shirley, pipe down. Please. Well, there's still a whole lot of questions I want to ask. Of course, of course, Miss Garland. Many as you like, but in the meantime, I want you to meet our new associate. Uh, may I present Mr. Clark? Great Lily Garland. Oh, oh, Mr. Clark, how do you do? Uh, yes, of course, uh, delighted. Well, well, Mr. Clark, Mr. Webb told me all about you. Are you really joining the theatre? Well, not exactly, but I feel that if by my contribution, uh, financial help, I can bring people closer to the, spi- to the truth of spiritual things... Well, that's just what I told Mr. Jesse. If it was just an ordinary show, I wouldn't be interested, being as I'm cleaning up in the movies anyway. But when Mr. Jaffe told me that it was the miracle play... Well, well, I didn't realize that an actress... Well, most uh... people have a wrong idea about actresses, Mr. Clark. That's true, Mr. Clark. Now, take me. I've gone to church practically every Sunday of my life, and most of the time I've had a class in Sunday school. And, well, there you have it, if you get what I need. Oh, you don't to need to say anything further, Miss Garland. I'm sure you'll be a splendid addition to our cast. You're a swell looker, too, don't you think, Mr. Uh, O'Malley. O'Malley, uh, yeah. see who it is. Yeah. Excuse the blue. Ah, oh, the house of David. My astro. My astro. Uh, gentlemen, just in time. We found the miracle play. Ah, good. The manuscript. We were afraid it was lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we found it in the lunchbox. That's fortunate. The lunchbox is always empty, so nobody look in there. Very fortunate. Miss Garland, Mr. Clark, I want you to meet those two remarkable artists. I've engaged them for our production. How Mr. do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Members of the original Omer Abagau miracle play. Yeah, yes. yeah, Maestro. Omer Abagau and also Unter Abagau. Oh, yeah, yes, Unter yes. Abagau is much older. Yeah, much older. Much July 1618. 1618? Yes, yes. Oh, say, here, Oscar, I thought this was an original play. You know perfectly well you can't make a nickel on a revival. Every time you've tried it, it's been a flop. Pipe down, Lily. I won't pipe down. Now, Is please, this uh, lady uh, going to act in our company? Uh, Miss Garland, gentlemen, is a famous actress. I'm engaging her for the role of Salome. Salome? Oh, nein, the Salome part is always played by my little cousin, Tina. Yeah, she's in Milwaukee. Indeed. Oh, I've always had a, a, a fondness for Milwaukee. Toledo! Looks like we're pulling into Toledo, Chief. Yes, now, Lily, suppose you and I go into your drawing room, settle the details of our contract, and uh, find out who that is, O'Malley. Yes? Clark. Uh, y- yes, conductor, I'll come quietly. Really, I will. Uh, you're uh, getting off at Toledo, you know, Mr. Clark. You remember the telegram you got from your brother? <laughs> oh, yes, I remember the telegram. Oh, dear, I, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I shall have to leave now. Oh, now, Mr. Clark, You'll I, have to hurry, uh, Mr. Clark. We'll be in Toledo any minute now. Well, really, I, I... I'm coming, Conductor. I'm coming quite Clark, quietly. I, this is rather unexpected. Yes, yes, but it, it, it can't be helped, I'm afraid. You uh, see, I... I, I, I didn't well, mean anything. Well, come right along, really, I didn't, didn't. Come right along. The porter will take care of your bag. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, goodbye, everybody. Clark, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Hey, goodbye. conductor, just a minute. Uh, come here. What's the idea? It's quite all right, sir. He's quite harmless. What do you mean, harmless? Well, they've been hunting him for two weeks. He escaped from a lunatic asylum. A lunatic? Holy smoke! His brother's meeting him to take him off the train at Toledo. You mean he's a nut? Delusions of grandeur, madam, that's That's all. I understand he has a habit of writing out large checks on the spur of the moment, but few people I suspect would take him seriously. Well, good day. Lily. Don't you talk to me, Oscar Jaffe. Lily, I swear... Of all the cheap, deliberate, low-down attempts to swindle me... Lily, as heaven is my judge, I knew nothing about it. I give you my word. Lily, I was... I was duped. Let me out of here. You've insulted me like no man ever dared. Lily, I was bamboozled. Get away from that door. Lily, stay. For the sake of our great love. Liar. Not Lily. Lily! Well, there goes Salome. Oh, Mally, Webb, I'm dizzy. <laughs> Everything's going around. Lily, no. Oh. Lily, no. Look. What, what is it, Chief? What is it? Look, he's come. Chief, what on earth? He's come out there on the platform. It's him. He's a, he, he's come for her, the button old maker, Max Jacobs. This is the end, Whip. O'Malley, this is the end. The road that has no turning. O'Malley, Whip. 
Before I go, there are a few words I'd like to say. Now, listen, Chief. We're in no mood for fuzzy lamentations. I won't keep you long. Just a few words, a few last words. Uh, skip them, Chief. We've had enough. When you get through with that whiskey, O'Malley, I'd like to borrow it. He's made a dipsomaniac of me. It's typical of my career that in the great crisis of my life, I should be flanked by two alcoholics. Webb, I want to give you my last instructions. Sure, I know your last will and testament. There's nothing left for me now but this. Nothing. Hey, but Chief, put down that gun. No? I know it isn't loaded, no? but all the same, it gives me the no? jitters. Not loaded? Did you say not loaded? You regret those words, Oliver Webb. When I pass now, into look, the Chief. great beyond... Chief. Listen to Chief, me, Chief, give Webb. me that gun. Listen, no. In this pistol lies peace, peace. Oh, I know you'll feel badly for a while, boys. Believe me, it's better this way. Yesterday, Oscar Jaffe, the wizard of Broadway. Tomorrow, a foolish old pest haunting the theater lobbies on other managers' first nights. Boys, you wouldn't want to see me that way. And boys, you'll remember me when you hear that wild sound in the night. Goodbye, boys. Ah, this is nuts. He's probably faking, but we can't take any chances. Get that gun, O'Malley. Webb, O'Malley, boys. Let me do it. Let me do it, Give boys. me that gun, Chief. Now, give me that gun. Oh, oh. Chief. Why? What? You blithering idiot. You shot me. Well, that's how it stood with this here romance at 8 p.m. when the 20th century pulled into Toledo. For a while there, it looks to me like I'm going to do all right. In one pocket, I got a script, a new play by Somerset Morgan. And the other pocket is a contract for Garland. And there she is waiting for me on the train. Me, little Max Jason, that used to work as an office boy for the great Oscar Jaffe. And ladies and gentlemen, she never looked so good in her life. Oscar! Oscar, what's happened? Now take him and ease him down, Jeffrey O'Malley. Is it hurting you, Chief? Oh, it doesn't matter. This is the end. Nothing matters Maybe now. Maybe it ain't so bad, Chief. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I can feel my lifeblood seeping away. Seeping you hear those banshees? Away. I don't like that. Where did you get your Chief? Through the heart, through the heart, through the heart. Oscar! Oscar! Hey, wait a minute, Chief. What? Ch Chief, you're crazy. It's just a flesh wound in the shoulder. The bullet only scratched you. You're dead? Oscar! Oscar, what happened? Are you yeah. sure, Webb? Why, look at it, O'Malley. You mean I'm not dying? No, not this time, Chief. Oscar, what happened? What do we do with it, Chief? Lily! Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. I have an idea. I've got an idea. Take your handkerchief, Webb, and tie a bandage around the wall. Okay, Chief. Yes. There you are. Thanks. Now let Lily come in and lock the door after Anything her. Anything you say, Chief. Oh. Oscar! Oh. 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 Come in, Lily. Oscar! Are you hurt? Oscar! Lily? Lily? Is that you, Lily? Yes, Oscar. It's me. Forgive me, Lily. Shot. Forgive me. No, Oscar. The only way out. No. No, Oscar. No. The only way to atone for all my failures, my failure in my work, my failure with you, Lily, my failure. Oscar, you mustn't yeah, die. Oh, you mustn't die. Can't you get a, a doctor, boy? He won't let us send uh, No one. doctor, no. Uh, too late. I'm going fast. I can feel my lifeblood seeping away. All I want, Lily, is to hold your hand while my life ebbs. Oscar, Oscar. Before I go, Lily, I want you to know I always loved you, Lily. Always. I know, Oscar. You were always the only one with me. The only one I love. You make me so happy, Lily. So happy. Why did you do this terrible thing, Oscar? It's all for the best, Lily. Nothing left. Oscar. Oh, forgive me, Oscar. Too late, Lily. Oh, Oscar, it's not too late. It's never too late. A love like ours. Oh, it's getting dark. Dark? Soon it'll be over. <laughs> Don't cry, Lily. Don't cry, dear, lovely Lily. Oscar, Oscar, darling. There's only one... Last request I'd like to make, Lily. Anything, Oscar, anything. The contract, Lily. That last contract we made, I want it buried with me. Oscar. I want it with me down below the ground against my body. Yes, 
Well, and, Lily, will you write your name on it somewhere so that I may have something of you to keep me through the law? Right? Oh. Better do it, Lily. It'll make it easier. It's his last wish, Lily. Yeah, it's my last Here's wish. Here's a pen. Yeah. It's getting dark. You better do it, Lily. Dark. You'll never forgive yourself. He's going. Going fast, Lily. Sign right there, Give Lily. it to me. <laughs> Quick. Where, 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 where do I sign? Here, Lily, here. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Lily? Yes. Garland. Uh, thank you, Lily. Now give it to me while I just can still see it before my eyesight dims. Lily, Lily, where are you? Who's that calling for you, Max Lily? Jacob. Uh, Open this door. All right, boys, open up. I've got the contract. Open it up. Lily Garland is signed with Oscar Jaffe. You're too late, Max Mandelbaum. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my little story of a great romance. By the time the 20th century gets into Grand Central, it looks like the jaffe Garland merger will be solid. And it looks like Lily is going to do very good in Oscar's new play. And as to the great man himself, he's making a quick recovery next door in drawing room A. I love you, my dear. I love you. I love only you. Stop, stop, Lily. That's terrible, horrible. No poetry, no feeling, no depth. Now Lily, listen here, Lily. Oscar Jaffe. Empty, flat, colorless, If you colorless. think you can insult me and bully Try me. it again, my dear. Try I it again. love you. That's better. Now once more, pear-shaped, pear-shaped. I love you. That's better. I love you. 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 This concludes the Campbell Playhouse presentation of 20th Century by Ben Hecht, Charles MacArthur, and Charles Bruce Milholland. Starring Orson Welles, with Elisa Landy and Sam Levine. In just a moment, Orson Welles will bring us his guests of the evening. In the meantime, here is Ernest Chappell. A few minutes ago, I spoke of vegetable soup as a great family standby. That's true not only today, but as far back as the cookbooks go. It's true wherever you go. Whatever community you might visit, you'd find vegetable soup a familiar, well-liked family dish. For a long time, a great many women felt that vegetable soup, to be at its best, must be homemade. But one by one, they've discovered Campbell's vegetable soup, so that with millions of families, Campbell's has replaced the vegetable soup formerly made at home. The reason you'll find in the soup, because here's a soup that's hearty and delicious in a homey, old-fashioned way, and yet convenient and economical to serve any time. If you'll try Campbell's vegetable soup tomorrow, you'll discover for yourself why it has become such a universal favorite. You'll see why in its tempting appearance. You'll taste why in its grand, home-like flavor. You'll enjoy the good eating in its nourishing blend of 15 delicious garden vegetables and rich beef stock. I'm sure you'll say it's so substantial, it's almost a meal in itself. But do try it this weekend and learn firsthand how convenient it is in the kitchen, how delicious it is at the table. Remember to ask your grocer in the morning for Campbell's Vegetable Soup. And now, here is Orson Welles. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present our guests of the evening, Miss Elisa Landy, whom you've just heard as the temperamental Lily Garland, Mr. Sam Levine, who was our Owen O'Malley, and Richard Maney, who is a little like Owen O'Malley, or Owen O'Maney, or Maney, the most active and successful of the current Broadway press agents. Miss Landy, Mr. Levine, Mr. Maney, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Landy, have you ever encountered Mr. Maney in his professional capacity? I've known of him, of course, as we all do in the theater, but he never acted as press champion for one of my plays. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. How do you do? Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we began the play tonight, I promised you we would have with us a Broadway personality who served as a model for one of the characters. He is Richard Maney, press agent par excellence, a man of voodoo personality and alluring vices of speech who was transplanted out of life onto the stage by Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur to make the Owen O'Malley you've been listening to. Now, just to make everything sound and secure... He was also engaged by the producers of 20th Century to act as a press agent for the show in which he was being duplicated. He is an unrelenting Times Square realist, a cheerfully belligerent barroom scholar who can turn an argument into a shambles with such phrases as you dithering Igorot, you foul Corsican, and other 
weird word associations you heard tonight, most of them faithful transcriptions of Manian action. It is his private brand of diction, a sort of conversational rubber hose which stuns without cutting and while tremendously effective, leaves no marks for the coroner to determine how the victim in the debate was killed. Mr. Maney, uh, you stand accused of being a notorious Broadway character. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Well, Orson, my inquisitorial friend, mine is an ancient trait, which I won't deny, has assorted aspects, but I've never betrayed a widow, an orphan, or an editor. <sighs> Tell us, Mr. Maney, what does a press agent do while the boss is, as you say, meditating? I've got four bosses meditating right now in their respective drama emporiums and I'm probably suspected by all of them. But I'll tell you, the first duty of the theatrical drum beater is to hold the boss's head after the premiere and while shoveling in the aspirin, convince him that critics are not banded together in a foul plot to destroy him bodily. I see, Mr. Manning. Who's your favorite impresario? Say, are you trying to get me fired? I love them all. I have no favorites unless it's Billy Rose. He pays off every week, and he produced Jumbo. Now tell us about Jumbo, Mr. Maney. Uh, wasn't that supposed to be the biggest show of all time? That elephant ballet, Billy Rose conceived it one night while in a trance. He hailed me in and told me to plaster his name over the Palisades cliff in hundred-foot letters as the only fitting expression of his gargantuan idea. He didn't get the billboard rights to the Palisades, but he did take over the old hippodrome and completely rebuilt it. The show was rehearsed longer than it played and postponed so many times. It was older before it opened than most Broadway successes. Since then, the midget maestro staged the Fort Worth Fair, Offered to buy Hollywood and turning part otter, flooded part of Cleveland that set a hundred diving girls in the tank. He is currently involved in diverting Long Island Sound into the World's Fair for the same sort of show. Thank you, Mr. Maney, for the dissertation on the lighter side of press agenting. And you, Miss Landy, and you, Mr. Levine, on behalf of my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and my colleagues, Campbell Playhouse, as well as myself, thank you very, very much for being with us this evening. <laughs> In tonight's Campbell Playhouse production of 20th Century, Orson Welles was heard in the role of Jaffe, Elisa Landy played the part of Lily, Sam Levine, that of O'Malley, Webb was played by Ray Collins, the two players by Everett Sloan and Teddy Bergman, and Clark by Edgar Kent. Gus Schilling was Jacobs, and Howard Teichman was the train dispatcher. Music for the Playhouse is arranged and conducted by Bernard Herman. And now, Orson Welles, will you tell us, please, about next week's story? <laughs> Next week, next week's story, next week we're proud to bring you a modern American classic, a story of life in a more colorful and leisurely age than ours. Of the strolling players whose theater floated yearly down the longest river in the world, the Mississippi. Miss Edna Ferber's great novel, Showboat. Miss Margaret Sullivan, unforgettable star of our own dramatization of Rebecca, returns to us as Magnolia. Miss Helen Morgan plays Julie, the part that in the minds of the American public is almost synonymous with her name. And our distinguished authoress herself, Miss Edna Ferber, is paying us the compliment of making her very first appearance as an actress in the role of Parthy Ann Hawks. So until next week, until Showboat, my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse, remain obediently yours. The makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse again next Friday evening when Margaret Sullivan, Helen Morgan, and the distinguished authoress Edna Ferber herself will appear with him in Showboat. Meanwhile, if you have enjoyed tonight's Campbell Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's vegetable soup? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. <laughs> This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.